Oh, Eric King coming to you from Nugget of Truth and the Shepherd's Way. Now, many of you Bible students here are becoming uh, very educated on the, uh, the patristic and early apostolic period of the church and how those teachings, many of them, contain the original teachings um, before there was ever a Roman Catholic church or before there was ever an Orthodox church as we know it today, some say Greek Orthodox church. Now, we here at the ancient Antiochian Church of God teach that patristic period that starts at 100 A.D. and goes all the way up to the Council of Chalcedon at 451 A.D. And in our Kingdom Discourse series, if you watch those, I think there's, a, I believe, 17 or 16 or 17 now lectures in that series. I would suggest that all Bible pastors and teachers and uh, uh, Christians that really want to go deep into God's Word Take that, watch those that series of lectures here at the Nugget of Truth and the Shepherd's Way. Recently I received a note from somebody, uh, because in one of those lectures I, um, I talk about St. Augustine, and I say that, uh, that some of the things he did was wrong, and that um, a lot of the Roman Catholic Church later on um, uh, grasped and, um, uh, one of his teachings and still hold to it to this day. And of course that teaching is called Replacement Theology. And of course, we do not teach replacement theology here. Uh, that's a neo-theology. That's, um, uh, quite frankly, it's, um, it's pagan. Um, and um, it was started, unfortunately, by St. Augustine. Now, I want to say some good things here at the ancient Antiochian School of God that we do recognize St. Augustine did. For the most part, you know, he, came, he comes from upper northern Africa, like Tortullian. Both of them fabulous in, the, in their early life in the early portions of, of their sainthood, if you will, they, they taught literally, they taught the scriptures literally. They were more connected to the Antiochian school of thought, the Syrian Antiochian school, who taught literally, and we being the remnant of the Syrian Antiochian school to this day, being first called Christians in Antioch, Acts 11 verse 26, we still hold to the original teachings of the church of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. So the Church of Jesus Christ is still here. Having said that, I, I want to say some good things about St. Augustine that we accept. He wrote a great, a great um, theological work on original sin. Um, that is a foundational Christian teachings. Of course, all those teachings that he was correct on agree with the Bible. Sola Scriptura, Sola uh, alone, Scripture, Scripture alone, Sola Scriptura. We base all of our teachings here on the 66 books of, of our canon of Scripture. Um, 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 in the New. That's your common Bible, 66 books in, in the Bible. Now, so St. Augustine was, was proper on many things, especially on original sin, and he also uh, taught properly very early, one of the earliest uh, uh, um, uh, from more influence from the Alexandrian school later on life, that he taught um, uh, the doctrine of uh, predestination and election uh, properly. And of course, Martin Luther... Um, St. Martin Luther, who we, we completely respect, um, uh, returning the church back to its proper soteriological studies, the studies of salvation, specifically he and Melanchthon completing the work, the Book of Concordia there in the early 1500s, which is our foundational creedal book, the Book of Concordia, that we here at the Ancient Antiochian Church still accept today when it comes to the issue of salvation and how to properly understand it now, how the early apostolic church taught it. And again, it agrees, it agrees with Sola Scriptura. So, St. Augustine, back to St. Augustine, he did some good things. He wrote some good uh, work when he interpreted the Bible literally, and early on in his life he did. But he was disappointed when he saw Rome falling apart, and he was anticipating the second coming of Christ, and so instead of treating eschatological issues uh, literally like he should have, like the ancient Antiochian school still does today, he began to allegorize. He began to take the origin um, uh, um, ideas of, of over-allegorization of Scripture. He, he was frustrated, so he said that, no, the church is going to, in fact, usher in that millennial kingdom of Christ. By doing so, he started what became known as replacement theology. And to this day, a lot of these Protestant churches, Protestant meaning protest, they protested the original Protestant movement protested against the false teachings of the Roman Catholic Church, hence they became known as protesters or Protestants, Protestant Christians. And uh, they were trying to 
find the truth again through Luther and more connections to the ancient Antiochian school, the proper school of theology. They wanted to get away from some of the Syrian mishap teachings and some of the predominantly the Alexandrian school mishaps, and they wanted to go back, get back to where where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. What did the early church believe in, and what do the scriptures actually say? So um, today, Protestant churches that claim they're Protestant, they believe in the Trinity, and they make predominantly the Trinity their main test of faith. And believe me, it is um, pre predominantly. Uh, the foundational test of all true Christian faith is, is, is the triune God, God in three purses, persons, <laughs> and uh, created of the same usia, of the same substance, but three personalities eternally in one substance, one God, inseparable, eternal, not created. So that, that is prominent, and we should hold that as key foundational teaching. If you don't understand who God is, then you've got the wrong God. So the Trinity is important. But today's Protestants, now, they take the literality of other aspects of the ancient Antiochian school um, uh, in their theology. But then now, when it comes to eschatology, they take the Roman Catholic teaching that was founded, started by St. Augustine, and still upheld by the Roman Catholics today, that they believe that um, in replacement theology, in other words, that, that the Church replaces literal Israel and the Jews. As a matter of fact, Augustine's teaching also became the philosophical basis for Christian anti-Semitism. He taught that the Jews um, had no more purpose in God's plan. And unfortunately, there's a lot of Protestants today that confuse the prophecies dealing with literal Israel and they try to take them off of Israel and then dump them on the church. That the church replaces Israel. And that Christ is not going to come up and send his millennial kingdom. No, the church replaces Christ. The church is going to set up this millennial kingdom. So Augustine held a literal grammatical historical interpretation on every other field of his theology, but taught that prophecy must be interpreted allegorically. Clearly not in agreement with the seven hermeneutic laws of Scripture that come from the ancient Antiochian church. In other words, beginning to invent his own hermeneutic, which is not a hermeneutic, um, because there has to be consistency in our interpretation from Genesis to Revelation. What rules of interpretation do we use consistently throughout our interpretation of Scripture? Augustine, again, he had taught that the church had taken Israel's place and had been given the promises and covenants which, in his view, Israel had fortified, or forfeited, I should say, by rejecting Christ. And he taught that the Christian church is the kingdom of God on earth. Now, that's not true. We hear at the ancient Antiochian church teach the fact that the church of God, the church of Christ, is the kingdom in mystery. We're in the first phase of the new covenant. And I would urge you to watch my parable lecture on the mustard seed to fully understand the new covenant as the early church um, understood it and as the ancient Antiochian church today still comprehends and understands it. We are the original church that Christ be, built, the remnant, the remnant of his original church, the ancient Antiochian church of God. So I just wanted to state those facts, showing that, no, we don't disregard everything that St. Augustine said. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it is important to understand where replacement theology came from. It's a Roman Catholic doctrine. Keep your Bibles with you at all times. We're going to be doing some more short talks here, one on origin. Even some of the Alexandrian school of apostolic fathers had ideas of dispensationalism, which is not spoken of that much, and it should be brought to our attention. There are some good things that actually came out of that school. In the meantime, keep your Bibles with you at all times.